Good day all, welcome back to Cruising Classics YouTube channel. Today we have for your viewing pleasure a 1973 Chevrolet Corvette Stingray. Beautiful orange metallic paint on this one. And a 454 tucked underneath the hood. This was last year for the chrome bumperettes in the back. First year for the polyurethane nose cone as you can see there. Paint job on this car is slick. I mean, very, very nice. It's originally an orange metallic car, although I don't know if this is the same orange metallic as factory color, to be honest with you. You can see here we've got the big block cowl hood and we've got the 454 call out and those slick black stripes. And when we lift it up later, you'll see that the, uh, the air cleaner is actually made to function with the cowl hood. So it works just as it should. Up front, that polyurethane nose cone fits excellently. And that's oftentimes a problem with these, is if it's out in the sun too long, it'll warp, it'll become uneven, the gap won't look right, or the color will fade. This one looks spectacular. You can see the black of the three-piece grill. It looks fabulous with that black stripe up above. Little chrome elements like those dual side mirrors, window trim door handles all pop in the light badging is nice on the car in good condition now these do come with pop-up headlights and those headlights turn on but in this car they do not pop up so that is a repair that the next person who owns it would need to make it's to get those headlights to pop up again like i said they do turn on you can see the lights underneath uh, but they do not currently operate in 73 Corvettes were still wearing the Stingray badge. That continued on to 75, the last year of that. And you can see here, it's all one word at this point. Side vents, rocker covers. Just a great looking car from the outside. Swooping fenders on it that make that Corvette look so nice. And again, 73 was the last year where you had this cool one piece back in that kind of kicks up in the ducktail. Uh, and starting in 74, they chopped it off right here, put a rubber bumper that was two piece bumper around the back side of it. Not nearly as nice looking. You can see here the T tops fit very nicely. Nice even line across, nice even line across, nice chrome trim on them. And a little more chrome back here in the back with the luggage rack and the bumperettes they are gleaming nice see your reflection in them got the concentric circle tail lights that are iconic on these corvettes and tucked down under the bumper correct rectangular chrome exhaust with chrome surround and a chrome surround around the license plate area i have not actually checked that uh, key to see if the original security system on the car works but they rarely do over on the passenger side, just as slick as the driver's side. Great looking paint job on this car. It looks like it wasn't done long ago. And whoever did it knew what they were doing. You can see we've got Cooper Cobra radial GTs all on all four corners. Along with steel rallies, center caps, beauty rings. And these tires look to be in very good shape. You can see they still have the whiskers on them. So they are pretty new. This car was born with not only the orange metallic, but also a 454 and that dark saddle interior. So it looks just like it must have when it was factory new with the exception of that hood and the black stripe there. Now that we're back up front again, I'm gonna pause briefly. We're gonna get that hood open and check out the engine. We are back with the 1973 Corvette big block. And looking at a nice tidy engine bay. You can see here we have the air cleaner that's specifically designed to go with the cowl hood. And you can see it's an actual cowl hood on this one. Works just as it should. It is a 454, we know that for sure. You got those nice big polished valve covers on there, an aluminum intake, a four barrel holly carb. 
Uh, and lots of times this is missing. It's nice to still see it here. The chrome ignition shield. You can see it is a power brake car. And it is power steering, which is tucked down in there. Let's run over to the other side. I want to show you over here. It does have headers, as you can see, and it sounds fantastic. Up on the front, where the numbers would be. You can see right here, here's the pad, but that pad has been decked. Uh, the previous owner told us that this car uh, was at one time the engine was rebuilt, and when they rebuilt it, they decked the heads, and so we lost the numbers off the front. The previous owner did claim that it's the original 454, but it's not something we can prove anymore at this point, unfortunately. This engine is made it up to a three-speed automatic transmission that would be correct for the time period of the car. And it sounds fabulous when she's running. And you'll get to hear that in just a few minutes. We did check out the rear gear on the car. It is posi traction and it's 3.0 to 1 ratio. So it'll, it'll still tear around and you can still do a burnout with it, but you can also drive it on the freeway, which is what's important to me. Now looking at the door cards, the door cards look original and most of the interior looks original to the car. You'll notice that there's some cracks here, a little chunk missing. There's a piece of trim missing. The door lock knob is missing, but we do have it. It's in a box of parts that come with the car, uh, but it needs a C-clip to get it on there. You can see on both doors that the handles are a little ill-fitting and need to be replaced. I would just put new door cards on the car. These are standard, not L82 door cards, so they're really not all that expensive. And if I were to buy this car myself, I'd put new door panels just on it. Sill plates look nice, inviting you in. And the seats are in good condition. They look original to me. Judging from the patina and the wear on them here, I would say that they are original seats. No rips, no tears. And they are still quite comfortable. You'll see we have the two-piece seat belts, the shoulder harness part here, and then down here, you can see the little clip that the shoulder harness clips onto, so you wind up with a full seat belt. Let's hop on in the car, take a closer look. Again, the interior is original in my opinion. All of it looks original. The carpet looks original. It has some stains, especially if you lift the mat on this side. You can see lots of staining underneath there. Um, if the mat's down, it covers it up, most of it, except for right there. Uh, but nothing we can do about that, just needs a new carpet kit. Passenger seat, just as nice or nicer in the driver's seat, actually. Less checking, a little less age. Passenger door card is in better shape than the driver's. We still have kind of an ill-fitting handle on it, but you can see how the hardware looks there. A little bit of paint issue, like door color paint. You could fix that pretty easily. They sell that product for these. Dash is crack-free, but in the center, right there it is, is some sort of adhesive stuff. We tried to get it off, but we didn't want to damage the dash in the course of doing so, so we stopped. And again, you can see no cracks, not even on the speaker grates, which is where you'll usually find them first. Steering wheel, OEM, typical. It's got the uh, tilt and telescopic function that you can operate just by turning that little disc. And tilt is right back here, as you can see. Oh, sorry, wrong one, there it is. So we've got some add-on pedal covers down here. And it, it, those are actually pretty nice because the pedals on these C3s are pretty small and they're up kind of high. These do enlarge the area for you and it makes it a little bit easier to, uh, to push on them. 160 mile an hour speedometer, tachometer that works. The gauge cluster, clock works. All the gauges actually work. Clock's not working right now because we'll need to put in the the cutoff key. Underneath the passenger side of the dash, you insert this key, turn it 90 degrees, and it's like an easy disconnect, if you will. It just kills the battery for the whole thing. I think the reason they've done this is one, for theft purposes, and two, because they have an aftermarket stereo that probably drains the battery. 
up here under the dash you see the wiper switch for the two two-speed wipers which do work the stereo that they put in is missing knobs now you can still turn those knobs and once we get the car fired up I will do that and get the stereo on for you so you can see it works um, but it needs knobs the original stereo is in a box and does come with the car. It's just an AM, FM, typical 1973 kind of stereo. Moving down here onto the center console, you can see some white wear, some fading here. But all in all, very nice. I did make mention in the ad that the heat does seem to work. If you just sit in here with the heater turned on, it does warm up. But the blower uh, does not blow. We don't know why, whether the blower needs replaced, whether it's a bad switch, we do not know. Moving on up the center console, uh, power window switches, and they do work. And you can see here that there's some holes and a little bit of cracking on top of this panel. And that's because a previous owner had installed a fire extinguisher here, and when it was removed, it left this, left this damage. They make, for Corvettes, those who are in the know on C3s, a pad that fits right here to rest your arm on that would just cover all that up, look perfect. They make them in this factory color of dark saddle. And I, if it was me, I'd buy one. They're pretty inexpensive, and it'd really just make, it'd make it nicer. So you got something to put your arm there. Over here in the glove box area, we've got the original owner's manual for the vehicle and just a tire pressure check the gauge. And actually, that's just a pen. <laughs> you get a free pen with it. I'm going to go ahead and reach under the passenger side. And put a little red thing in there. Put a little red key. I normally would just leave it in here and just turn it when I'm through with the car. But I wanted you folks to see it go up in here. Ah, there we go. You see the courtesies just came on. Nice and bright. And this is going to be a cold start in a big block, so I'm going to have to pump it a couple of times before we try and start it. or anything mounted back there there are tie downs as you can see right here for the t-tops drop right down to a nice idle already horn works i'll go ahead and pull the light button on and you'll see the headlamp button comes on there on the dash so the light does and you can see they're on they just aren't flipping up. See that one's on under there too. Common problem with C3 Corvettes. Let's give a listen to that symphony of sound coming out of the tailpipes. Great looking car. Folks, if you got any questions about this 1973 Corvette, give us a call. Here at Cruising Classics in Columbus, Ohio, our number is 614-276-7355. You can ask us about how to get financing for it, how to get it transported from our garage to your garage, 
and any other questions that may arise. Again, we're at Cruising Classics in Columbus, Ohio, 614-276-7355. We'd appreciate your call. We're the ones with this 73 Big Block Corvette. We appreciate you joining us today. We'll be back again tomorrow with something else cool. Thank you.